Hello, my darlings. It's Zoe here. And today, I bring you another Bakugo fanfiction. In truth, I originally wrote it as an Ayazawa fanfiction, uh, where I changed a few things up, uh, because I think this video would do better as a Bakugo fanfiction. So, here's Bakugo, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, my lovely darlings, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon and a merch store. Both links are spread around in my description. I would greatly appreciate it if you could visit them. However, I of course understand if you don't have any money to spare. In that case, I would simply ask slash remind you that please to watch the video until the end. Then like or dislike it, doesn't matter which of the two you do, and then comment something, anything down below. Whether or not you like the video, what you like the most about it, no matter, it doesn't really matter. But also I would like you to share the video around. Do the thing that YouTube is actually supposed to do, putting my video in recommended. Yeah, could you do that for me, please? <laughs> Thanks. Share it around, share it on Discord, share it in Skype groups, share it in Twitter groups. Aren't Twitter groups still a thing? Yeah, anyways, share the video around. I would greatly appreciate it. If you can get just one person interested in my videos, I will be eternally grateful to you. Lastly, if you're new and you think I'm worth it, please join my beautiful darling doll army by subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Do you have what it takes to become one of my darlings? Hmm? Anyways, let's get right into the story. 3 2 1 by now, Bakugo could pinpoint it, a sound that hurt his soul deeply, a sound that kept him awake, filling his mind with thoughts he tried to suppress. He looked at the wall that separated your room with his. Thanks to an error in floor plans, his room was located right next to the girls' wing of the dorms. For sheer luck, it was him who got the good spot, as Kaminari put it. As its location made it so that he had a slightly higher chance of seeing the girls in underwear. As if he cared about that. What he did care about was the fact that you were the one next to his room. Bakugo had a crush on you for about three months now. The moment he had realized this himself was when you beat him during a sparring match. Your quirk blink allowed you to teleport short distances, which had allowed you to skillfully dodge most of his attacks. What had been different that day for him was that he didn't get mad once you actually beat him. He was feeling happy for you. And he never did that. He wanted to talk to you, be around you, protect you. And whenever he reached that point in his thinking process, a sour clump came up his throat. Maybe he couldn't protect you if he was beaten by you. Deep down he knew that his flawed personality would get hiccups when it came to that. He looked back towards the wall. The sounds were getting more quiet, but more frequent. This was a 50-50 chance it was about to end or get worse. 
He had noticed how stressed you were shortly before this became normal. You had problems in school. Math was becoming too complex for you. And once both French and German were introduced as extra languages to learn due to their importance in quirk history, Germany was the country with the least amount of registered villains thanks to a strong cooperation between a powerful police force and pro-heroes, and France was the leading country in mutation quirk acceptance. But after these two lessons were added on Class 1A schedule, it all just went downhill for you. Of course he could help you. He really wanted to. But there was this mental block that prevented him from being nice to you, or anyone else for that matter. He frowned. The noises you made in your bed were getting louder again. In a way, he was glad that your neighbor was Momo. The rich girl had a radio which played white noise to help her sleep, and therefore was the reason why she couldn't hear you. She'll probably tell you some heart-wrenching crap that you really didn't need. Bakugo himself, on the other hand, needed absolute silence to sleep. Maybe that was why he was so grumpy all the time as a child. His parents were quite loud at night. Not always, of course. But often enough to ruin his sleep schedule. He yawned and rolled on his side. Maybe you should keep ignoring you. You would tell someone if it got too serious, wouldn't you? Suddenly, a feeling of dread overcame him. He needed to scream. Loud. Was it you who caused this? With both hands, he grabbed his pillow. Why was it so moist? Why was he sweating so badly? After pressing the soft, wet pillow into his face, a wail escaped him. Hearing you do this to yourself for days must have taken a toll on him. He threw the pillow against the window. This was enough. He jumped off his bed and began searching his drawers. Katsuki needed some encouragement. Like most students, he had a secret stash of Lunch Rush's pink soda. The stuff was rare and expensive. And Lunch Rush himself only sold them in small cans on Fridays in the cafeteria. It was some sort of fake scarcity thing. The food-based hero had a fable for limiting supplies of his food and drinks. While this did lead to a bigger general offering, it also led to many favorite foods already being gone before you could reach the cafeteria. He took three long sips of the strawberry-flavored sugary drink and felt its rejuvenating effects immediately. After hiding the can back in his drawer, he left his room. The hallway was eerily quiet. The curfew bots that roamed each building would avoid the hallways to allow students to at least go use the bathrooms at night. With quiet steps, he approached your door. Why was he suddenly feeling so intimidated? With a shaking hand, he gave three careful knocks. No answer. Should he just enter? Would it ruin his chances with you if he did? If so, he could never forgive himself. Then he noticed the light appear from underneath your door. Then two small shadows. The door opened. There you stood. The light of your room behind you. 
shadows hiding your pretty face. What do you want? Your voice was calm. Too calm. Why are you crying? He mumbled. Your toes curled. Did he really hear you? Did he hear you cry before? This was so embarrassing. Can I come in? You want to say no. You already do. But the only thing that left your mouth was a quiet yes. Being alone in your room with Bakugo was awkward. He had sat down on your bed next to you. His hands stored in his pockets of his sweatpants. You two didn't say anything for about ten minutes. Thinking. Until he finally spoke up. Why were you crying? When you didn't respond, he continued. I want to be number one hero. Katsuki sighed. And a hero is supposed to protect people. Specifically friends and strangers. He put emphasis on the and. When a hero is unable to protect the people he cares about, how is he supposed to protect strangers? He looked down at his feet. You don't have to tell me what's wrong with you. And I must admit, <sighs> I hate to say that. Baku gulped and looked at you. If it were for any other person, I would say that I honestly don't care what your problem is. As long as you can deal with it yourself. You were starting to get a clue of what was going on. But you were too emotional right now to respond. He waited another minute and went on. But I do care. I care a lot about you. Bakugo sighed. I've now been listening to your wailing for a few days now. I know when you start. I know when you stop. And by now I can tell when it's about to get worse. You blushed in embarrassment. Why were you such a failure? You don't have to tell me. I know it feels having problems with something and your inner pig just keeps stopping you. Again he paused. Was he tearing up? People will tell you to be better than that. To fight it. Tell you you're talented when you in reality are not. Tell you to get over yourself, to grow up, to be a better person, to become a fucking adult. Basically emotional crap that is supposed to convince you to lose all emotion and to function as they tell you to function. Because to them, that is normal. Disregarding the damage you will receive when fighting a battle you cannot win on your own. <laughs> he gave a sad chuckle. The trick is not to get over yourself. The trick is to trick yourself in going around it. To not fight it, but to make a large curve around it. The same people will then tell you, you aren't improving, but you know you are. 
Depending on the size of that pig, however, it can take longer or be over quick. People in general are very impatient, including me. He gulped. One of my picks is that I lose my temper very quickly, so I guess you could call it a hog. <laughs> Another chuckle escaped him, this time darker. In truth, people will never fully understand how you feel, and no matter what you do, we'll tell you that your progress is too slow, but... I say, any progress is good. Finally, you spoke up. What are you trying to tell me, Katsuki? That I like you a lot. He said after a minute. And I want you to stop crying. That you're not alone. We all fight with bad thoughts. It's just some people can't admit it themselves. I like you too. You sniffled. Then... Then let me help you with the pick. Carefully. Slowly. Not head on. Feeling a sudden surge of emotions, you clung onto him. Arms wrapped around his waist. Face buried in his lap. He didn't react immediately. But he also didn't move away. Eventually, his hand found your head, and he began softly petting you. <laughs> <laughs>